know where she is. We know where we think she is, and that's at home writing her book. Uh, that will be coming out later. It's hard to have a book sometimes when you haven't done a lot, but maybe she will report this in her book, what her, uh, what her report card shows. Next, we gave her, so that was jobs. Then we gave her an F on honesty. Earlier this year, when we were speaking of jobs, asked her about her job creation, she gave us very misleading numbers. Tried to blame other, you know, it's always somebody else's fault. I don't know if you've noticed that about her. It's always somebody else's fault. So she gave us the numbers on jobs. They were wrong. She said, oh, well, that was somebody else's fault. We know there's a lingering issues about what she put on her application when she got the job at the hospital. She never has really come clear about which phantom it was that signed her name to her job application. She's had this consulting contract, which first she refused to disclose. Since then, has talked a little bit about, but still won't give us a straight answer about that. So we give her an F on honesty. Government restructuring and reform, something that she said she was really going to work hard on. Well. She said she was, but then as we had a bill coming through the Senate this year to eliminate the Budget and Control Board, she worked behind the scenes basically to keep the legislature from abolishing the Budget and Control Board. She wanted to establish her Department of Administration and have the Budget and Control Board. So instead of having one state agency, she wanted to double government and let's have two state agencies working uh, in that arena. She fought against real restructuring. She was cutting backroom deals on the budget and then she would forget what she said. She said we weren't going to have any state money go to ETV. Then she devised a plan so that money could go to ETV. Then, after it was done, just like she said do it, she vetoed it. So that goes a little bit to honesty, too. Can we trust her when she says something? Um, she also voted to allow state agencies to run deficits. Anti-government reform, we give her an F. Transparency, holding uh, meetings in secret. Uh, the treasurer, the Republican treasurer, will tell you that he's had complaints about her uh, meeting with other members of the Budget Control Board, not in the open, not to the, to the watchful eyes of the press. Uh, no full disclosure of her travel and her schedule. Sometimes we know where, we, where she is, but other times, like I say, she's off raising money in some faraway uh, place, uh, getting rides on airplanes that we don't know who's paying for. Uh, going to, uh, to Paris at the cost of uh, 250, nearly $250,000. So we give her an F on transparency also. And finally on hypocrisy and pay-to-play politics, um, if you look at her appointments to various boards and commissions where she has the right to appoint, a lot of them are her campaign donors, big-time campaign donors getting jobs in her administration. Then if you look at this, the budget for her staff, uh, she said she was going to have a, a lean, aggressive staff, yet she's paying them $100,000 more than our former governor paid his staff. She's hired a, a, a group of young people. There's nothing wrong with young people, but they, I don't know that you hire a group of young people who have no background in running the governor's office and then pay them $100,000 more than people that were running it before. Um, she's requested a federal bailout for the Department of Transportation. That's hypocrisy. She says on the one hand, we want no federal bailout. Then on the other hand, she says, oh, well, we'll take this money because I need it to balance my budget. And finally, as you know, uh, not getting straight answers on this trip to Europe. Uh, look, there's nothing wrong with the governor uh, being involved in economic development, but you need to tell us what the whole picture is. And of course, she comes home and says we've landed two deals. Then the commerce backtracks off that. So what we hope we've landed, I hope we've landed two I hope we've landed three. But don't come and promise something that you haven't delivered yet, and then be afraid to tell us what the costs were. She took uh, staff and other people to Europe with her at a pretty expensive price to the taxpayers in these uh, tough economic times. So I'll be the first to say this. I know I'm getting an F. So is she. Uh, and I think, quite frankly, the legislature may deserve an F. But you know what? As I look through what her grade said for the legislature in the Senate, there are 46 of us, she gave at least 24 passing grades. So if at least a majority of the Senate got passing grades, then shouldn't this be a wonderful day in South Carolina? We should be doing wonderfully because she's got a majority doing exactly what she says she wants them to do. Yet we all know 
that it really isn't such a great day in South Carolina if you don't have a job right now and you have a governor who doesn't have a plan to get you a job. Her plan is to make sure she's got a job when she quits being governor so she can go out and be a television host or write books or whatever it is she plans to do. But it isn't going to be sticking around here with the people of South Carolina, I bet you. So at this point in time, and I, by the way, I'm Brad Hutto, State Senator from Orangeburg. And I'm turning it over to Craig Coleman, who's state senator from Fairfield County. One point that I want to make, I represent rural areas, Fairfield, Chester, York, and Union. And Brad, too, he represents York County. What's the other? Uh, Orangeburg, Bamberg, Barnwell, Allendale. And this past year, we, we uh, passed what we call the Rural Infrastructure Bank Bill, where we, we've put in a lump sum of money into a bank to help the rural counties. Like in Chester County, when springs closed down, Chester County at one time had the highest unemployment rate in South Carolina. Fairfield, too, has high unemployment rate, and I don't know what Orangeburg is. All of our, all of our counties are approaching 20%. I mean, everybody in South Carolina is hurting, but I think it's, in rural counties, they're hurting on steroids. And we, we, the Senate, we created the Rural Infrastructure Bank Bill to put money in these, uh, counties that are hurting the most and, and they got statistics that have showed unemployment, uh, lack of income and all that. And in that we have the governor get, got three appointments and from what I understand she has not appointed a one yet to, to the board to do these things. This, been, this pile of money has been sitting in the budget control board for probably almost two years just sitting there not being used by rural counties or any other county so we can run water and sewer to help our rural areas and that's just an example of, of nothing not being aggressive with the problems that we have in South Carolina. And we got a house member here, uh, John King, who represents all of, all of York County, I mean totally within York County. All right, and uh, we will be glad to answer any questions uh, that you might have. This is a report card. The governor's report card is based on her agenda, her legislative priorities. Is that the right measuring stick to be using for uh, progress in the legislature? You know, it, it's, it's, let me just start by saying the whole thing's a stunt, in case you hadn't imagined, you know? Uh, the fact that y'all are here covering us do this and you're going to go cover her, the whole thing is just a stunt. Instead of all of us working hard for the people of South Carolina, what we're engaged in is something that will catch your attention. But no, that's not the proper measure. And I'll tell you what, the three of us up here, we know where our measuring stick is. We all have to stand for re-election uh, coming up this next year. And the citizens will get to vote on us, and they'll decide whether we've done the jobs that they want us to do representing uh, each of them that are in our districts. You know, I think the, the, uh, the big uh, numbers are in the measurements. If you look at those things that come out, how are we doing on test scores? How are our children faring? Uh, on health issues, uh, how are we doing with jobless numbers? I mean, those are the real numbers where you can compare South Carolina to other states, other states in our area, and you see that we just don't fare as well. That's the thing that the governor ought to be about doing, is improving the quality of lives of the citizens of South Carolina. And I think foremost on that right now is creating jobs, and you compare us to other states, we're not faring that well. So. You know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you this report card in anything but what it is. It's Mickey Mouse uh, theatrics, because, and so is her report card that she's going to give in just a minute. But, uh, you know, if we let her go giving her report card and we didn't give ours, somehow tomorrow it would all be about her report card. We want everybody to know she is part of the failure that's going on here, because I will tell you right now, I think the legislature deserves overall a, a failing grade, and I don't know how she can give it a passing grade. The only way she can is because she's cherry-picked issues and she wants to reward some of her friends by giving them A's on the report card because they're all in this amorphous thing called the Tea Party. That used to be something my grandmother allowed me to do when I was a kid. We used to get peanut butter on saltines with a Coke. That's what we used to call a Tea Party. But now there's this other thing that she tries to uh, pretend like she's a part of, so she wants to make sure all her Tea Party cronies are getting A's. Has that improved South Carolina? Not only. Not only. Anybody else have any other questions? Let me ask a question. Yes, Every parent-teacher conference I've ever been to with my kids, we sit down and discuss the problems this past semester, and then we talk about what we're going to do right the next semester to improve some of these problems. So take jobs, for example. You're the governor right now. What are you going to do about jobs to change the, the problem we've had? Because there's a structural problem in this country 
that I'm not sure of snappy answers and pointing to the problem are going to solve. So what's the solution? I think a lot of it is tax reform, which we had a commission that came out with recommendations, and there's been no leadership on behalf of the governor to say we need to implement that. We need to lower the taxes for industry. That's one thing that's a big issue. They're at 6%. Well, there's a double-edged sword there because you lower the tax revenue. I don't know what you're talking about, income tax, property tax, what's the portion of it, because it's a multi-headed uh, beast. So what, what part of taxes can we reform and still have the revenue for job creation or rural infrastructure money or you need, you, you need to lower, lower the taxes for industry, number one. That's 10.5%. You're going to lower it to 6% for all of them? Yeah, well, it, it, that's a, that is a complicated issue I know. That, that, that we could talk about. But, yeah, she, I think she ought to have us together, whoever she wants to. But she, we had a plan. We had a, a bipartisan group look at it and offer solutions. She has advocated not one of them. She ducked that issue, is what she did. Yes, ma'am, you had a question? What is your belief system on the higher education and its form in helping with job creation in the future? And the fact that the state budget keeps cutting out on higher education and training programs for vocational rehabilitation and other departments. It's a travesty. I can tell you what, you cannot create quality jobs without having an educated workforce. And with the jobs that we're trying to create in this global economy here in the 21st century, we need people that have more than a high school education. That's just not going to cut it anymore. And here we have a state that is year after year after year diminishing the money that we put into higher ed. And even if you compare us to North Carolina and Georgia, we are doing a woefully inadequate job of that. And I don't know that the governor has a plan on that at all. I mean, I haven't seen word one from her about anything on, on higher ed. And it is, it is an issue. It is a problem. And even more, let me bootstrap on that even more so with the technical schools. I've been in the legislature now for 11 years. I was in the House for eight and been in the Senate for three. And the technical schools have always come out short in, in monies. And if you think about it, the technical schools, they educate more people as far as higher education than colleges do. And they are always get less money than, than anything on a per student basis. We thank you all for coming here today. We're around if you have any individual questions. Uh, I'm sure that you'll go on to uh, hear her give her report card, but we wanted you to have hours before you got in there. So thank you all for coming. Uh, we feel you got some individual, uh, anybody got, needs got a few more.